today. The Apollo 11 spacecraft was orbiting the moon on the eve of one of the greatest events in human history. In just a matter of hours, a man would step on the lunar surface. As News 4 Tucson, Sean Mooney reports back on Earth, there were scientists from Tucson who were part of the team that would allow astronaut Neil Armstrong to announce to the world the Eagle has landed. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. President John F. Kennedy's famous speech in September of 1962 accelerated America's space race with Russia. Econ, go. Sergeant, go. The challenge issued to NASA to be the first to put a man on the moon. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. But even before the president's grand pronouncement, scientists on the campus of the University of Arizona were already mapping the gray orb. Led by Gerard Kuiper, a renowned planetary scientist who founded the Lunar and Planetary Laboratory at the U of A. Gerard Kuiper had the idea of doing photographs through telescopes of the moon and making maps that way. The first one was published right around 1960. In order to create a more dimensional view of the moon, Kuiper came up with a very simple but effective technique to map the lunar surface. This is a three foot diameter globe that uh, Kuiper and his group produced to project images onto. And so from right in front, it looks just like a view from a telescope would. When you walk around to the side, features start shifting shapes and changing like they look in reality from overhead. By 1968, NASA astronauts were orbiting the moon, but Apollo 11's mission would put a man on the lunar surface. Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro, go. Kuiper's scientists had already been working with NASA, but this time out, Kuiper's maps would be crucial to the mission's success. Capcom, we're go for landing. Altitude 42. Bill Hartman was one of the scientists who helped map the moon, providing essential data and pictures to help NASA find the best place to touch down. What they wanted was a flat, flat, featureless, dull, the dullest geology you could imagine. But even with all the planning, the lunar landing did not go off without some tense moments. 60 seconds. Lights on. Forward. Forward. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. So as they were coming in, and, and uh, Armstrong is piloting, and, uh, and, and Aldrin, and they, they, they were headed right for a fairly big concave crater, and he made a decision at the last minute to try to avoid that, and that's why they got within a few seconds of using up all their fuel you know, to make the landing. Fortunately, Neil Armstrong found a clear area, but when they touched down, there was less than 30 seconds of fuel remaining. Uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin would, of course, go on to walk on the moon and return safely to Earth. The scientists from right here at the U of A having played a role in one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Sean Mooney, News 4, Tucson.